Hello and welcome to this Sauce and Brain Hub video on the nerves in the neck. To begin with, we're going to briefly outline the nerves that can be found here. Firstly, we have the glossopharyngeal nerve, which provides an array of functions. It provides the sensory supply to the oropharynx, carotid body, posterior third of the tongue, middle ear cavity and eustachian tube. It also provides taste sensation to the posterior third of the tongue, along with parasympathetic supply to the parotid gland and motor innervation to the stylopharyngeus muscle of the pharynx. This is the most difficult nerve in the neck to see on dissection. It follows the course of the stylopharyngeus muscle near its origin. Next, we have the accessory nerve, which only has one main role, which is providing the motor function of the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius. This runs most lateral and can be best seen innervating the sternocleidomastoid muscle on its medial surface. Now we have the hypoglossal nerve, which provides motor supply to all of the intrinsic muscles of the tongue and all of the extrinsic muscles of the tongue with the exception of the palatoglossus, which is supplied by the vagus instead. This runs more laterally than you may initially think. Two good ways to identify it are to look for the ansa cervicalis hanging from it and for how it travels horizontally across the external carotid artery to reach the floor of the mouth. The sympathetic chain can also be found in the neck and is responsible for providing the sympathetic supply to the head and neck. In the neck there are some large swellings associated with this called ganglia. It runs very medial and very deep. Finally, we have the vagus nerve, which carries out a vast variety of functions. It provides sensory innervation to the skin of the external acoustic meatus and the internal surfaces of the laryngopharynx and larynx, along with the visceral sensation to the heart and abdominal viscera. It provides motor supply to the majority of the muscles of the pharynx, soft palate and larynx. The vagus also provides taste sensation to the epiglottis and roof of the tongue, along with parasympathetic supply to the smooth muscle of the trachea, bronchi, GI tract and heart. The vagus nerve sits between the glossopharyngeal nerve and the accessory nerve and gives off a fair few branches. It can be found posterior to the internal and common carotid arteries. One of these branches of the vagus nerve is the recurrent laryngeal nerve. It loops around the arch of the aorta on the left side and the subclavian artery on the right to head towards the larynx. Now we're going to have a look at the positions of the nerves within the neck. To orientate yourself, here we have a view of the neck that is posterior to the pharyngeal constrictor muscles. Firstly, we have the glossopharyngeal nerve, which is labelled accordingly. It can be seen following the course of the stylopharyngeus. Next, we have the sympathetic chain. This can be seen running medially and deep to the pharyngeal constrictors. The vagus nerve can be seen labelled here. It is found running posteriorly to the internal and external carotid arteries. The recurrent laryngeal nerve can be seen labelled here at the bottom of the diagram. If you remember, on the left side it loops around the arch of the aorta, and on the right side the recurrent laryngeal loops around the subclavian artery. Nevertheless, regardless of this difference in course, both sides travel to supply the larynx. The accessory nerve can be seen labelled here. If you look, you'll see it running laterally and innervating the sternocleidomastoid muscle on its medial surface. Finally, we can see the hypoglossal nerve labelled. If you remember, this supplies all of the intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of the tongue with the exception of the palatoglossus. Now, for the final part of this video, we are going to cover the main branches of the vagus nerve. One of these branches of the vagus nerve is called the superior laryngeal nerve, and this gives rise to an internal and external branch. When considering the sensory supply to the larynx, 
it is useful to divide the larynx into above the vocal cords and below the vocal cords. The internal laryngeal nerve provides sensory innervation above the vocal cords, and the recurrent laryngeal nerve provides sensory innervation below the vocal cords. Now we need to consider the motor innervation of the muscles of the larynx. All the intrinsic muscles of the larynx are supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve, with the exception of the cricothyroid, which is supplied by the external laryngeal nerve. All of these branches of the vagus nerve can be seen on this diagram here, along with how they relate to the surrounding vasculature. Remember to pay particular attention to how the recurrent laryngeal nerve loops around the arch of the aorta on the left hand side and around the right subclavian artery on the other. Find us on Facebook, Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.